Hey there, this is Ananya, and today we are back with another interesting project. We'll be building three types of clocks. That is a 24-hour clock, a 12-hour clock, and an alarm clock. We'll be using a lot of new TK Inter widgets and actions along with the previous ones, such as inserting images, inserting images on buttons, using modules or packages such as play sound, time, pillow, date time, and a few more. So without further ado, here's a look at the 24-hour clock. Pretty nice, huh? Now let's see the 12-hour clock. Now that you have a clear idea of what we'll be doing, let's start coding. And stay with me till the end to have a look at the alarm clock and also know how to code the entire thing. So let's begin. So firstly, let's see which modules and packages we need to import. So firstly, we'll have import sys so as to access the time of the computer. Next, tkinter is obvious. And from tkinter import message box, we have to do, do this explicitly since message box is a module and not a class. Next, we have import time, date time, and play sound. We have seen the example of play sound in the dice project that we had done previously. And a new one is the package pillow. Okay, so you have to explicitly um, pip install pillow with a capital P and you say from PIL import image TK and image. This being done, let's go ahead and build our root window. So we create instantiate the TK class to a variable root, give the geometry, like give the size. And now coming to an important point that is Image one, if you can see this, image one is equal to photo image and inside it I have file is equal to some PNG photo. So I'm using the photo image, okay? And inside it, I am giving the file name as 12.png. Now you need to make sure that this uh, picture is saved in the exact same directory as your Python file is in. For example, my Python file is in, inside Sublime text folder. So my this PNG file should be inside Sublime Text too. So you will not have to mention a precise explicit path for it. Okay, it reduces the work. Similarly, I have image two and image three. Now these images will actually be incorporated in, into the button. Okay, like you just saw the examples. Let me just show it to you. See the 12 hour clock, 24 and alarm clock. These will be inculcated into the button. This being said, let's see how the button will work. We all know about buttons, right? In just instead of the text, I will have image is equal to whichever image I had stored previously. Now, if you can see, I have border width is equal to zero. Why zero? Because I do not want any rectangular border being shown around the oval buttons, right? And that won't make the image actually stand out in the exact importance of using images won't be depicted and hence I will give the border to zero so that it becomes invisible and to the command parameter I shall pass an anon anonymous function lambda and to that I will pass two parameters for each of them that is button 12 and button 24 so as to actually know which button is being clicked and I shall pack them or rather say place them into an exact position onto the window. This being said, we have created the buttons. Let's just have one last look at it. We have these three buttons ready. Now let's place that image that we just saw. So what you do is you actually have to implement the pillow package modules. Okay, here. So into photo, you say image TK dot photo image. And inside that, you actually open the picture file. That is image.open and you pass the name. Again, please make sure it's in the same directory. Okay, this is done. It'll put it inside the Kinter module and it'll open up and do its task. Next, you can't just use photo like that. You will have a few more steps to it. That is, you'll be incorporating this photo into a label. 
So what I do is I call the label widget and instead of any text, I'll just say image is equal to whatever variable I had stored the picture inside that is photo and I shall pack it into the screen and I'll keep looping it. That is root dot main loop. That's it. We have created a basic window. So it finally looks like this. You can give the text out here, whatever is necessary. All right. Now coming to the point of using the tick function. Okay. Remember this button 12 and button 24. So what it does is inside the tick function, you have a parameter value which will store which button has been clicked. Now we know how to create new windows and give them their labels and whatever geometry you want to provide it. We have done this previously. So inside a clock variable, I shall declare label and you can give various options to it, such as the font. You can increasing it by this parameter, 12, 15, 30, anything. And you can make it bold, give it some specific style, times, Helvetica, anything. And you can change the foreground, background, and maybe increase the border so that it looks a little heavy and nice. Now you place it into the screen. Now, three important tasks that you do with conditional statements, that is, if val is equal to 24, go to the 24 time 24 function. Otherwise, if it's 12, go to time 12 function. And if it's none of them, obviously go to the alarm function. Now let's check out time 24 and time 12. Now, if you can notice, I have global clock here in both the functions, right? You need to give global because this is not object oriented programming. It's a procedure oriented programming that we're currently using. So you need to provide global so that it can be accessed. Now we have a time module actually being used. So you call the strf time method or function and to that you pass mod h first. Okay. And you separate it, separate each of them using colons. So mod h actually means 24 hour time. And since this is a 24 hour clock, we'll use mod h. Mod m stands for minute and mod s for second. And inside the label clock, okay, the text that we want to pass will be the string obtained from strf time. So we assign the variable to it. And I want this to keep running every thousand milliseconds. So thousand milliseconds will mean one second, right? You all saw the example that we just did, right? Previously in the beginning of the video. So that's it. You use clock dot after and it'll keep running into this inside this function until unless you close it. The exact same logic will be used for time 12. The only difference that you can notice is mod I and mod P. Now mod I stands for 12 hour clock timings. That is 1 to 12 and then again starts from 1 again, right? 0 to 12 and so on. And now mod P will be AM or PM and rest everything remains exactly the same. So we have built two of our clocks that is 24 hour and 12 hour. Now let's come to the alarm clock. So down here, when if the alarm button was pressed, I am simply calling the alarm function. I don't have to give lambda because I don't need any precise explicit parameter. So I shall say inside alarm, I shall make E1 and E2 global so that I can access it in into and like inside another function, right? So again, I shall create new windows and I shall have four tasks to do. Firstly, give a label named ours and give a text inside it so the user can understand that he or she has to input what are the clock needs to ring. Secondly, what you have to do is inside E1 entry widget, you take the input from the user. We have done all this. It's all known to you. Second input will be minutes. That is at what minute has the alarm got to go off? So you give the minute label, place it inside the screen, the window and inside entry widget E2, you take the input of the minute uh, values. So we have two inputs. And you place them according to your geometry, however you want it. Now, when the user has given the inputs, we will have a button named start so that if start button is clicked, it will actually go inside the alarm begin function and start uh, calculating as to what the system uh, like the computer time is. And if it matches, then it'll stop and the alarm goes off. So begin, it will be a button 
and you place it and we have seen the bind function previously what it does is inside the event button one if you left click on it it will go inside the alarm begin function with the that precise event now inside the variable h i am taking whatever has been given inside e1 entry widget and similarly e2 dot get gives whatever is there an e2 entry widget into the variable m now while this is true that is while one i just need to go inside the loop if int of h why int why do you have to type cast it to int because h is in the class string format okay it's in string we have to type cast it to int so if int of h now the main point if it is equal to date time dot date time dot now dot hour now date time will be the module module and inside it you have the now function the now function will basically give you the entire integer or string value that is uh, the r the minutes and the seconds but we only want to access the r for variable h so we say now dot hour and similarly the and operator is important we have to match both of them int of m should be equal to now dot minute now if this is so i want to give it a play sound that is i want to play the sound alarm clock dot mp3 again we had done this previously in our dice game project and uh, it'll give a nice sound and it'll give a pop up message using message box dot show info saying time is up and this being done it'll simply break outside the while loop and that's it our code is done it's pretty simple and uh, let's just go ahead and see what happens right we have checked out a uh, 24 hour and 12 hour clocks let's try out our alarm clock now so let me hit on alarm clock and it says what hour do i want it now my system time says 12 pm so i'm just going to give 12 and at 5 all right so let's see if it works okay i hope you could hear the alarm going off and also you can see on the screen that it says time is up the message has popped up and our alarm has gone off gone off pretty nice right we have all these three clocks you can change it into an executable file onto your desktop and use it whenever you want to i hope you all enjoyed it and i'll come up with something new again next time please stay tuned and i hope you all had fun bye bye i'll see you all soon